Hi, this is Rose Hulse and... James Carter Johnson. <laughs> with Screen Hits TV. This is our third edition of Screen Hits TV, Where to Watch It. I just want to thank all of the people that have been watching our channel. It's been amazing. We've had over 174,000 views of our, our last show in Kenya. So we're kind of encouraged to keep it going. Um, last time we did our show in Kenya. And so I thought it might be fun to take it out of the office and do it somewhere different. So this, this episode, we're talking about music. Films, um, mu films with music in it, TV shows with music in it, how it works and what to watch right now, what's coming out. Um, and so we decided to do this music cruise in Camden, which is the place of, um, what's that famous artist? Amy. Um, yes, Amy Winehouse lived up the road from here in a big house and did a lot of drugs in it. Okay, James. <laughs> so yes, Amy Winehouse, and um, we're here with Cloud. This is Cloud. He is um, playing for us today on the music boat. And um, yeah, so we're just going to get right into it. Elvis Presley is coming out. I think what we need to do before we even go into what Elvis is about is just watch the, the trailer. So should we watch the trailer? Check it out. Are you born with destiny? Or does it just come knocking at your door? He's a young singer from Memphis, Tennessee. Give him a warm hayride welcome. Mr. Elvis Presley. Get a haircut, buttercup. In that moment, I watched that skinny boy transform into a superhero. Wish to promote you, Mr. Presley. Walk through a party in the town of jail. Are you ready to fly? I'm ready. So did you know I was a musician, James, when I was growing up? I didn't know. What did I, you play? I played the flute. I know it's not as sexy as an instrument as the guitar or um, the piano, but I did the flute, classical. So I know you also ice skated. Did you ever ice skate while playing the flute? What do you think? I mean, that would be difficult. Exactly, there's your answer. <laughs> Anyway, and then also growing up, I had a crush on a person who was deceased. I mean, how weird is that? I was obsessed with Elvis Presley. I remember like when everybody had like um, Mark Wahlberg and his Calvin Klein underwear on their walls, I had Elvis. And I remember my friends were like, but that's so weird, Rose, he's dead. And I was like, I know, but wasn't he really good looking? And then I became completely fascinated with his story and and everything and really followed it and so i'm really excited about this new film coming out um this month yeah so it's, it's a relatively new actor austin butler um who we just saw in the trailer um i think he looks great um i remember there's a there's a line in true romance the quentin tarantino script uh where the lead character clarence worley said if i had to shag a guy i'd shag elvis um mm. if i really had to <laughs> That's how good looking this guy was. And Austin Butler looks great. Um, he sounds like him too in the trailer. Yeah. I don't know if that's some um, audio technology that's making him sound like Elvis, but it's like, or he must have just sat in the mirror with his microphone trying to copy his voice every day because he sounds just like Elvis. I mean, 100%. <laughs> of, of course he would do that. You get that role as a new actor, it's, you know, a, a complete change of your life forever. Um, Where is he from, this guy? I actually don't know anything about his background. Um, we could look into it and put it in the show notes, perhaps. But, okay. um, you know, he could be Australian, he could be English, I have no idea. Hmm. He's very cute, though. Not as cute uh, as Elvis, but anyway. What is this about? Because actually, I don't really know much about what this um, film's about. Is this more about, like, his sleeping pill habit? Is it more about his naughtiness habit, that, what, like he was with females? Or is this about his rise to the top and his fall? Or about his, like, psycho manager that tried to control him? I think certainly the last thing, I think it's certainly about uh, Colonel Tom Hooper, who's played by Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen Tom Hanks play a baddie in any film. So I'm really looking forward to him being at least half a baddie in this one. Um, but um, I yeah. think it's a traditional biopic. I think it's a, a three hour movie that they want Oscars for. Three hours, God. Um, and, and I think it's- Have you uh, ever stayed awake in a three hour movie? I could never even finish Avatar. I always fell asleep about two hours and five minutes. 
I have, I mean, I, I've only ever fallen asleep at m movie premieres because then they make you kind of wait for so long beforehand. Um, or you're but... just drinking the wine, James. <laughs> no, but I'm excited to see it. And actually, you're right, Tom Hanks in a new role. And I mean, this kind of just goes back to like this obsession with um, music. I mean, I think that it's like a sure bet that if you do a film or a TV show with music as the, at the heart of it, you're sure to have a hit. I mean, what was the one that came out with Queen? That was a huge hit. Massive hit. And you know, I actually didn't like it that much. I thought really? it was only I liked okay. It. I, I kind of yearned for the Sasha Baron Cohen version that would have been R-rated and would have been like much, you know, kind of filthier and uh, much more. James, what is your, your thing about like all this filthiness <laughs> and drugs? I mean, honestly, I don't know where your mind's well, at. Well, you know, I, I kind of want uh, it to be true to life because you know, Queen was naughty as the next band, I think. Mm. Um, and that and that movie was, you know, one, one that's sort of child friendly, I guess. Um, but you know, but it was very successful. So who am I to argue uh, with? You know, whatever it was. No, I, 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 I liked it. I didn't really know much yeah. about Queen, and it was really nice to kind of tell his story. And and Amy Winehouse, you know, my husband and I, we live in Regent's Park area, and just kind of coming to like the jazz cafe and seeing the musicians and and kind of seeing what her journey would have been like and watching her documentary or her film, you know, there was so much to her life that I never knew, and I thought that was great as well. Um, so where can people see Elvis? Is it in the theaters or is it going to be right on a streamer? Yes, it's in the theaters um, this summer and it'll go on to HBO Max, I think three months later, which is quite a long window these days. Um, but uh, certainly worth it, I think. From what I hear, it's going to be an excellent movie. Yes, so the next uh, TV show is brand new, uh, streaming on Disney Plus, um, and it's called Pistol. It's uh, directed by Danny Boyle, um, who won an Oscar for Slumdog Millionaire, and is also known for Train Spotting and Shallow Grave, and you know a, a series of wonderful movies. Um, and it's about the Sex Pistols, um, who are you know the punk band uh, of the nineties or the eighties. Of the uh, actually, they started in the seventies, uh, but became really famous so, to, on the seventies, eighties, kind of basically in nineteen eighty. With the right guidance, you could change the world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Sex Pistols. Punk has taken London's youth by storm. People's minds are too imprisoned. We want to destroy that so the future can emerge. We're going to kick this country awake if it kills us. My vision for the Sex Pistols is one of danger and desire. No, no. Whether you can play is not the criteria. It's whether you've got something to say. Come see us play. We're awful. I am an anti I am an anti We're creating a revolution. I don't want musicians. I want saboteurs, assassins. What do you want to say with your music? Actually, we're not into music. We're into chaos. This is punk! Mm. Um, what was one of their songs, James? Sing it for me. So, uh, God Save the Queen. <laughs> no, I'm definitely not doing James, that. James, sing it for me. God Save the Queen, for instance. Uh, I know, can I just, I, just want, I just want to hear a tune. Can you just sing it for me? We, I tell you what, we can overlay um, a little medley of their songs. But I can't hear it right um, now. I just want to know what it's... No, I'm, I'm not going on <laughs> being oh God, doing a Sex Pistols Can cover. you sing me a song of Sex Pistols? Could you do a Sex Pistols song? Yeah. Okay, he's gonna sing. So I really want to know what the Sex Pistols sounds like, because I really don't know God Save the Queen. So actually, Max, who's with us on the boat, who's been driving us, is gonna actually play a riff. How cool is that? Sing it, James. I ain't no, like one line. God save the queen! A vicious regime! Remember the lyrics. Oh, that's very good, though. That's, that's I riff. can see why they've actually made it really Should cool. Do you know? Do you know the story behind the song of this one? It was for the Jubilee of '77, and they and they did um, like uh, on the Thames. They took a, a ferry, and they were playing a concert on the ferry. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> As a form of protest. <laughs> Was it a form of protest? Yeah, a form of protest. <laughs> and uh, I think it was 
I think it was the most sold, um, the most selling single in that time period. Time, yeah, in that week. Yeah. And, so, it, and it was banned from every radio station. Did and, the Queen and, not and, like it? Um, well, they kind of nipped it in the bud before the Queen could even hear it. <laughs> it was banned from every radio station. Uh, uh, yeah. After behaving very badly on TV, it got banned there. Um, but still went to number one. You know, all, all of the you know singles from their first album went to number one. Um, you know, they were enormously popular despite having no media coverage whatsoever. Do you think they're going to ban it? Or do you think that when they show it in this new TV series, will they do that whole episode? I guess they're going to have to, I think right? They, absolutely. So I've just seen the first two uh, episodes. So I've yet to get to that point, but I imagine they would. Why wouldn't they? It'd be amazing. That was really good, Max. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I never actually even knew the, the story or the history behind that. They debuted that song, um, you know, on a boat on the Thames as a protest because they were banned from the radio, they were banned from television. They were so subversive, so transgressive at the time yeah. um, that, you know, um, no media would cover them except newspapers who said they're the worst thing in the world. They're going to destroy the children. They're going to be the, you know, the, like the scourge of society. And because of all that tabloid coverage, and they were brilliant too. Um, so what's the, what's the show about? What's the show time. about? It's, is mean, it about God Save the Queen song or is it about like their rise to fame? Yeah, so it's from the point of view of um, Steve Jones, who was the guitarist in the group. Um, and started the group and tried to be the lead singer, but then was too shy to be the lead singer. And after that, a chap called Malcolm McLaren, who owned a chain of boutiques called Sex with Vivian Westwood, um, then kind of created the band around Steve, who was a very good looking guy when he was younger. And he's still a bit of a shagger today. Um, he has a really good There you go again, James, thinking about something <laughs> naughty anyway. Um, so, Anyway, so um, they, they find Johnny Rotten to be the lead singer, they find Sid Vicious uh, to be the bass guitar player, even though he can't play bass, and they build this kind of, it's one of the first kind of like created groups from an outsider, um, and managed by Malcolm McLaren, um, and it's kind of influenced by Vivian Westwood. And so it's sort of a sort of classic art school band in a way. Their first gig was in St. Martin's, um, and they were, you know, really like the kind of, front end of the punk movement you know and they you know went from the uk to like a crazy american tour uh which went terribly um but it sort of became legends along the way and then broke up i think after like a couple of years they always do that don't they i think it has um, to do with like a bit of ego and somebody getting more attention in the band and that really stressing people out and then fights start to happen and then these amazing bands break up and, and you see it all the time although the rolling stones i think have been intact for a long time haven't they Yes, they like each other. The Sex Pistols always hated each other. And has there ever been a movie about the Rolling Stones? Not a biopic. I think it's maybe when they die, one will come out. Oh, that's so cold. But I think that would be a really good one. So back to the Sex Pistols. It's um, where can we watch it? Where can we find it? Are people even watching it? Is it trending? Is it worth watching? Or is it not as great as people had hoped it would be? Yeah, definitely trending. Oscar winning director. It's on Disney+. Plus. Who's the director? Danny Boyle. Okay, yep, yep. Um, only on Disney+. Plus. He directed the whole show. It's all shot in a four to three, um, you know, just like TV was back in the day. And he cuts in a lot of stock footage from the, the time. So it feels very grainy, like it's shot on film. And um, yeah, I highly recommend it, actually, having watched two episodes. I think it's great. That's interesting, because Disney's a brand about families, and yet they have a show about Sex Pistols. A lot of these are legacy shows from their purchase of 20th Century Fox. Um, and they've kind of rebranded it as Star. Okay, so it's going under Star. Yeah, so the Star stuff is adult stuff. So if you have Disney Plus at home, you may not even see this stuff because it automatically goes under 12 years old content. So you may need to set up another profile for grown-ups, you know. Uh, yes, Desperate yeah. Housewife is under Star. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the that Queen's works. been around for a long time because the Sex Pistols were like before I was born. And that song, God Save the Queen, which was in protest, that was made for the Queen's Jubilee many years ago. So Swings and roundabouts, we're back to the pistols. Yeah. Did they sing at this year's uh, Palace? Uh... Sadly, they didn't. <laughs> Celeste did a wonderful version of uh, I'm sure It's a Wonderful Bacon World. I'm was like, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, like, Sex Pistols coming out. I think you should like sing your song, God Save the Queen, at the Jubilee at the Palace. At the... Um, unfortunately, Johnny Rotten doesn't look so great anymore. I think it, been, <laughs> it wouldn't have been great. But... <laughs> I know, James, you don't want to talk about this next show because you said that it's old, but there's a lot of great programs that are made that may not be made today, but they're still great. And I, I love Nashville. I mean, I know that you loved Glee. I know that was your thing, Glee, but... <laughs> I did like the first season, that is true. I know you sat yeah. there with your friends watching Glee, okay? 
But in any case, I'm more of a Nashville girl, and I love Nashville. And I, I know that people always want to watch the newest of the best of everything. But if you have not seen Nashville, it's kind of new to you, right? I think it's great. She was the queen of the charts. Great at day. James, I know all your songs by heart. You were just so great. Thank you. Are you a songwriter? And living her dream. Why does she have to go to work? Somebody's got to work around here. I thought we were rich. We're just a different kind of rich called cash poor. I wish the new record was performing better. Miss James, you've got to find your place in a new market. But when you're on top... One idea is for you to co-headline with Juliet Barnes. Co-headline? She's the number one crossover artist in the country. Who goes on first? You have to fight to stay there. Be nice. Oh, I'm always nice. Oh, I'll be extra nice. And this benefits me how? It's not for you, it's for the label. Raina, I want you to meet Juliet Barnes. My mama was one of your biggest fans. She said she'd listen to you while I was still in her belly. Well, that is a charming story. You probably gotta go on soon. I'm sure you're gonna wanna make sure you got those girls tucked in there real good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that I was the future of country music. You're not some overnight sensation. No, you are sensational overnight, to the best of my recollection. And everything to lose. Why don't you come take over for Buddy as my band leader? Can't do that to Raina. Raina's not the only woman in the world, you know. She's got Randy doing her record. She wants you and her band. Why's she coming from my house next? You think this Juliet Barnes is just a flash in the pan? Nope. She's gonna be around for a while. Nothing is easy. You're gonna have to figure out your next move. So you're telling me after 21 years at this label, if I don't open for your little ingenue who wouldn't make it as one of my backup singers, that you're not gonna support me? Still, I need to know your decision. Oh, you can kiss my decision as it's walking out the door. Connie Britton. Oh, I'm so sorry. I try that again sometime, only slower. Hayden Panettiere. Sometimes I wish I could just do everything all over again. What would you change? Nothing. Everything. Now, let me kind of tell you what Nashville's about and how it starts off. I think it has Hayden Pantieri in it, who is like the young, hot, sexy, up-and-coming like country singer. And then there is um, this older singer. What's her name? She's a very good actress. Anyway, she's the aging actress at 40, okay? Aging, I wouldn't really say, but they make her seem like, oh, here's this famous country singer who's aging. And she kind of goes on to the stage and she has like this moment of like, wow, I'm getting older. And the, the record label is trying to actually get somebody young and up and coming. So like, we want you to go on tour with this young, this young hot, you know, starlet. So there was like this kind of animosity between the two of these um, singers. And it kind of follows their journey. One who's kind of made it and who's on her way out and one who's up and coming. And then all the other musicians in Nashville trying to like kind of make their way. It makes me think of Johnny Cash, you know, and, and the love that he had for his, the girl that he eventually married. Um, I think it's brilliant. I think it's full of drama. It does feel a bit soap opery, but I mean, they had, what did you say, six seasons? I mean, that's how good it is. And I think it's definitely worth, worth watching. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched the uh, first season back when it came out. Um, I, I don't know if they had a break for COVID or what happened, but I guess six, eight years ago. Um, and I have to say, it is a good show. Um, I did enjoy it. What um, did you enjoy about it? Um, I, do, I, I like the tension between the, the, you know, the intergenerational tension. I love the whole music scene because they've got all these great musicians from the Nashville scene playing all the time. And you new know, musicians. Know, they were even know, featuring yeah. like new musicians, which is great. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm not a country guy necessarily, but you know, then I listen to it and I go, oh, this is great. You know, so there's there's a lot of kind of great artists, great country, uh, you know, guitar players and, and you know guys from that tradition who come and play on the show. And yeah, it's got a good vibe to it. Um, Where can you watch Nashville? We know that it's not on Now TV anymore. I think in the UK you can watch it on Amazon. You can rent it on Amazon. Yeah, so you've got to like rent it or buy it in the UK. Um, it's on Hulu uh, in the States. Um, so you can, you know, you can just use your subscription over there. Um, anyway, I was saying that there's like this huge kind of obsession and we know that Greece is coming back out. I mean, oh my God, I remember I was in college going in the sorority and they said, oh, we have like this initiation rose and you have to come to this initiation and you have to do a performance from Greece or a skit. I was like, are you serious? Why would I ever do that? And like, I never even watched Greece before. And then I actually spent the night watching Greece to try to find which skit I wanted to do. And it was actually really good. And um, I liked it. And so there is like this huge thing about musicals and films and they're kind of coming back out. Like, why do you think the, the Hollywood's kind of churning these back out? Do you think 
people are just really attached to music film and music TV? It's interesting. I, th I think musicals are, are better on the stage. Um, but then sometimes you get an amazing one that just breaks out. So if you look at Mamma Mia... Um, oh, that was really good. That movie... Abba. That movie made more money in the UK in the box office than Avatar. That's how popular it was. Did it? Yeah, particularly in the UK. So sometimes you get a real breakout hit that does really well. Um, I'm in general don't like musicals, but um, La La Land is one I'd recommend. Oh, um, that's with Ryan Gosling. That yeah. is very good. Because you know that had a very strong story underneath it and a, and a lovely romance underneath it, and it's sort of nostalgic to what Los Angeles used to be, and and what people hope it'll be when they want to go there, um, and it's beautifully shot. Um, his first movie, um, or at least his first big movie, the director Damien Chazelle, he did a movie called Whiplash, which is a, my, certainly my favourite film of his. That is not a documentary um, about music or a film about music. That was it. Absolutely, painful. it absolutely is. Really? It's about a, a jazz drummer. Um, I know it's about a jazz drummer, but it was just so traumatizing and the abuse he got to be like. Yeah, it's a film about bullying, really. Yeah. Yeah, from my yeah, yeah, more than music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I think that's an impeccable film, perfectly made. Um, uh, so, and I think that guy, Damien, used to be a jazz drummer. So I imagine he'll do many more music uh, movies. This is a little bit off topic, but I kind of want to talk about. You know, Johnny Depp's been in the press a lot lately, and not in the way that we're used to seeing him. I remember him in Nightmare on Elm Street. I could not sleep forever um, because of that. But he did this movie, which I didn't think was very good. No offense, Johnny Depp, it was Cry Baby. Oh, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. Do you remember that? He was a sort of Elvis figure in that. Um, a sort of heartthrob uh, who, and, and a ne'er-do-well stealing you know, teenage daughters away from the, you know, the fathers. Um, but I have good memories of that movie. I, I remember it being good, but I haven't seen it since the no, 90s. I was like, here you have this Johnny Depp was in like 24 Jump Street, and he was like, you know, hanging out with like River Phoenix and all these people in Hollywood. And then he does this musical where he has like a little tear tattooed to his eye, and he's singing. Oh, God, no, 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 no. No, I didn't, I didn't like that one. Did you watch any of the trial? Well, I mean, how could we not? I mean, you know, I think when Sam was uploading our videos to YouTube, it was like everywhere. Um, but I think Amber Heard, you know, it's a difficult one because it's like men are not allowed to ever say anything about women. But I think that she was awful. I think that she was a manipulative, awful person that stole him away from Vanessa Paradis. Maybe his marriage was a bit calm and relaxed. And, you know, she came in and, and made his heart palpitate. And she took him away from his comfort zone and then destroyed his life with her whatever. And, you know, I'm really, I really feel sorry for, for Johnny, actually. I'm sure he was a bit naughty as well, but I think if you push somebody over the edge, they're going to lash back. Um, I mean, I think I, I have friends who, um, you know, are both nice people independently. But when they're together, it's like a toxic relationship. Like they, like, they may be really attracted to each other, but something about them being together really messes them both up. And I think that relationship is one of those. You know, they're both extremely good-looking people. Both, you know, I don't think she's good-looking anymore. She just looks... I don't know if it's like the photos they've taken right. of her, but every time you look at her on a YouTube one, by, by all means, just Google Amber right. Heard, and she has these angry faces. Like, she looks like one of those crocodiles it's so awful yeah i think i think the, the youtube is maybe not most favorable to her particularly in courtroom lighting um <laughs> but yeah no she, she is great looking um, i think she was yeah. great looking yeah. but i mean she made johnny Depp cut his finger off or did she chop it off i don't even know the story who chopped off whose finger i think she threw a bottle allegedly and that that cut the end of his finger off when it smashed oh, that's like not true because how can a bottle cut off somebody's fingers. He must have slammed the bottle onto his hand or something. It does, it does sound a bit far-fetched. But I mean, do you think she pooed in his bed? <laughs> do you know about this? James, why do you have to always go to the darkest... Oh, because she's that. arguing that the dog did the poo, and then Johnny Depp is uh, saying that there's no dog that big could, that could do a poo that big, at least not in their house. Um, know, she, he's think, saying it was a human poo. I think a part of Johnny wanted to just like ruin her forever, to say, like, you know, I made you somewhat famous to get more work, and now you're taking my money. But you know what? Okay, you want to play this game, I'm going to destroy you. So now every time somebody thinks of Amber Heard, they think of what she supposedly did in his bed. And that's just awful to be remembered as pooing in Johnny Depp's bed. Which is poo bigger than a doll. That's a gross, actually. I mean, on a, kind really of, gross. on a kind of more serious note, it's a very interesting trial for future trials because... Um, it's one of the first ones where, like, of the Me Too era, where the guy won, or at least kind of like 80% won, because she got awarded some libel damages as well. Um, 
But what, what's interesting is they had the same trial, give or take, in the UK, and they, they threw it out, said that Amber Heard, whatever she says, is fine. But in the, in the US, she lost. And I think the reason she lost is because it was on YouTube so much. Um, I think uh, there was so much exposure. And then also, I think his lawyers were a bit better this time. Um, Do you think that she just lost because in America people love Johnny Depp? I mean, we love Johnny Depp. 21 Jump Street, Nightmare on Elm Street. For you, crybaby. But I mean, I think, you know, people love him. Yeah. No one knows Amber Heard. I remember at the beginning of the trial, the glee that her lawyers were having, just loving it. Um, you know, going, uh, oh, and, and Johnny, how, mu how many pills did you take that night? You know, smiling. Um, but I mean, the, the key bit that I think turned the trial against her was when um, Johnny's lawyer, who's a girl, seemed like a great lawyer, kind of had an Anna Kendrick kind of vibe, um, was asking her, so you said that you would give the seven million from your divorce to charity? And she went, yes, yes, I pledged it to charity. And um, she went, well, um, as you sit here, you haven't donated it to charity yet, have you? And she goes, yes, yes, I, I pledged it. And she goes, but you haven't donated it. And it carries on like this for about 10 minutes until the, the jury realizes that she lied. She hasn't donated it. Um, and she d pledged it for the press. And that looked terrible. And once you're caught in one big lie, then the jury won't believe you. You've lost them. Yeah, no, completely. Well, that's, I think that's, that's good. I think we've kind of covered um, a lot of music, uh, musicals and shows about music and, and where to watch them. Oh, and there's one more that I love that if you haven't seen yet, it's called The Star Is Born. And there's many of these that were made. And the Bradley Cooper one that came out last year. Great movie. Won an Oscar. It was a great movie. I think Bradley Cooper did a great job. I think many people have seen it. If you haven't seen it, I would. I think this whole kind of fake love story off screen with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper ruined it for a lot of people. It was like, you know, disgusting really watching it when they were both in relationships and how they behaved kind of off camera with each other. But I thought it was a really great um, film. I saw it, I felt connected to it. I think Bradley Cooper and even Lady Gaga did a great job. Where can you see that if you want to watch it again? Yeah, Star is Born is off the streamers uh, subscription-wise subscription anyway. Uh, so you've got to buy it or rent it at the moment. A couple of other recommendations while we're here. Um, there's a wonderful Beatles documentary um, called Get Back. Um, which Peter Jackson, um, you know, of uh, Lord of the Rings fame uh, directed, and that's on Apple TV Plus. Um, that's basically kind of uh, footage that's been in the archives for, you know, 40 years of them uh, making an album and performing their first gig for the first time in three years over like a three week period. And it's really like uh, if you're a Beatles nerd, you can go behind the scenes and see what they're really like. And you can see that, you know, Legends like um, Yoko Ono being the one that tore them apart actually isn't true at all. Well, you don't know that. You weren't there. Yeah, it didn't seem like the vibe watching the show. Well, that show's probably directed by her. Not at all. It's just, it's just archive, uh, archive documentary footage. footage, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Hmm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for so much. This has been a very, really interesting um, where to watch it on the canals of Camden with some amazing musicians. This is Cloud, everyone. And then we have Max over there that was just doing the Sex Pistols. And um, yeah, so um, we will actually post on ScreenHist.tv under the highlight section some really great um, shows and films to watch. Um, so go on to ScreenHist.tv or ScreenHistTV.com actually and check it out there. Thank you again for our third episode of Screen Hits Where to Watch It. Thanks, guys. And Cloud, uh, would you like to play us out? <laughs>